Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Stanley. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Stanley Parable. We went down the elevator, and now we're questioning our life. Let's continue. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read "Mind Control Facility." Did Stanley actually do that, though? Maybe he he read the words "escape." And went through that long, long ass hallway. Holy shit, how long is that? Let's just continue the story as our uh, narrator has put it out as. A big uh, light bulb, a big, big light bulb. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I mean, I don't think I can go back to the escape, so I guess I have to have the strength to find out. Camera. Now the monitors jumped to life. Their true Whoa. nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Whoa. Whoa, that's insane. Wow. That's crazy. 427 was our number, wasn't it? 4... 2... Damn it. I'm gonna wait and check out. 427. That's the one. That's our room. This mind control facility it was too horrible to believe it couldn't Fired. be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions oh, oh. had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Whoa, this story is amazing. No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Man, the narration has done so well. But imagine, he was happy only because he was getting mind controlled. How would that feel if that happened to you, you know? One day you wake up and you're just like, not happy anymore, and then you realize the only reason you were happy was because someone controlled you? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. Wow. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. 100% dude, that's messed up dude. Mind control status offline. Wow man. This is insane. I think I'm supposed to go to that blue screen, but let's just see what's up here. Four. What do I do? What am I doing? Beep boop, beep beep boop. Beep boop, beep beep boop. Console disabled. It's already di disabled. Beep boop. Boop beep beep.
Oh, of course, the big red button. Which I cannot press for some reason. Oh, facility power. Should I, am I just supposed to go through this? Mind controls idle. Awaiting input. How did I get out of this mind control? Hold up. How did I get out of this mind control? Voodoo magic put on me is what I want to know. System power. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do what the narrator told me to. Is that it? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Was it? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. But? And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Freedom. At last. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And That's Stanley amazing. was happy. Yay! I'm happy! Wow, beat the game. That was quick. Two episodes in. That's amazing. What a really cool game. And I guess we're back. Some sort of a time loop. All right. Anyways, um, I guess we'll continue continue this uh, new part in the next episode. This whole time loop thing. It's actually really cool. This game is very, very interesting. You know, it's uh, seems pretty good. You know, like the narration is done extremely, extremely well. You know, the whole story, how it depends on what decisions you make. I feel like that concept is uh, is really good. You know, Stanley stood for a long time in one spot. It's part of a game. He likes to see how long he can go without dying. <laughs> so far, he's doing excellent. And if he just stays right where he is, I'm sure he'll keep up that good momentum. Let's observe the genius at work. <laughs> I, I love the I love the narrator. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. The narrator is is what it's what makes this game the game it is. The narration is amazing. I'm going to pause the game because I feel like he's going to talk over me again and uh, block me. I mean, I'm going to be talking over him again as soon as he starts. Either way, it's a really cool game. It's an amazing game. Um, I'm going to be making more parts on this 100% for sure because it seems 
very cool and immersive, you know, to find all the little secrets about what's happening with Stanley and his world. Um, truly, I have really been been enjoying this whole uh, couple of well, like 30 minutes of gameplay that I've played. And it's cool. It's such a short game that makes the players want to play the other parts as well. Because a lot, of the, a lot of the times where when games have multiple choice, when a game is a choice-based game, people tend to make it way too long. And it's hard for players to, you know, come back and make different choices to get different outcomes because the game is so long for them to play and it kind of gets boring or tedious or, you know, you go through the same things again and again. You make different choices. Yeah, sometimes it can be cool. But then I'm not going to be sitting through a four-hour game just to know, just to get a different outcome. But the fact that this is, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes at the max for one outcome. And then we're back in the loop again. 10 to 15 minutes is not a long time. Right? And it's cool that... And since 10 to 15 minutes is not a long time, people, players want to come back and play the game and get different outputs, which is really cool. And when you have a narrator like this guy, I mean, props to him, man. He He's he's killing it. He's really killing it. Anyways, um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.